issues here first because that will come in handy later. I'd like to welcome you to a lecture demonstration on classical ballet made possible by the Arts Fair here in Essenora uh, for uh, the Ballet Manila booth. You have to go up to the third level. We have a booth there where you can avail of more information about our summer. Okay, what is classical ballet? It is the strictest form of dance. And like all dance forms, it works on the body of the dancer as the instrument in order to present the art on stage. For classical ballet dancers, it involves three principles that are unique to classical ballet. The first is called turn out, okay? For those who are seated, you are welcome to stand up and try this out. For those who are standing, just follow simple directions, okay? First, you have to track it so that all the toes are pointing to the left. And then, we put our right foot, the heel of the right foot, in front of the big toe of the left foot. Okay? Come on, guys. You have to try this. Come on, come on, come on. The right heel is na sa big toe of the left foot. We will put the little toe of your right foot in front of the heel of the left foot. Are you comfortable? No? Very good try. Give yourself a hand. Very good. Okay. This is called fifth position in classical ballet. In classical ballet, we have five basic positions of the feet. First position, second position, third position right foot in front, third position left foot in front, fourth position left foot in front, fourth position right foot in front, and fifth position, which we just did right now. Fifth position, left foot in front. If you see my knees, okay, I'm wearing leg warmers because I need to keep my legs warm. When I am in fifth position, are facing the side. That's because classical ballet dancers have to do all our dance positions, all our dancing, with a 180 degree turn out of the leg in the hip socket. The left leg turns out 90 degrees to the left, and the right leg turns out 90 degrees to the right, making an angle of 180 degrees. Why? See, the knees are facing the side. Why? With my knees facing the front, normally, I try to lift my leg to the side, and no matter how many years of ballet training I have had, I can only lift my leg so high. But if I employ turning out, and now my knees face the side, and I try to lift my leg, it can go higher and higher and higher. Because the actual principle, thank you very much, that took a lot of practice. Thank you. The principle of turn out actually increases the range of motion of the leg in the hip socket. So again, I will try to lift my leg to the side, turn in. And now I lift my leg to the side, turn out. Okay? This brings us to the second concept of classical ballet called line. Okay? What is a line? A line is the distance between two points. Geometry 101. Okay. So, imagine my body has points. 
actually for this I'm going to call in two ballet scholars of mine to help me. I'd like to call in Brian and Elizabeth in for two years now. Yes? Two years in classical ballet. Okay. Face right. Fifth position. Right foot in front. Tom do back. First arabesque. Now lift. Okay. Relax. Okay. Let us imagine that there are points in Elizabeth and Brian's head, neck, hip socket, knee, and heel. There are also points in the elbow and at the tips of the fingers. Okay? They will now do first arabesque once again. First arabesque. Okay. If you see the line that the body makes in space, do you see all of those lines? Relax. Okay. Now, if the training in classical ballet was not very good, and Brian and Elizabeth did not employ 180 degree turn out. So turn in guys. Turn in. Yes. Tone the back turned in. Sickle your foot. Bend your knee. Lift your elbows. Lift your shoulders. Do everything that's bowel in classical ballet. Okay. Now lift your leg in first our best. Sickle, sickle, bend. Lift your hip. And yes. Do they make nice lines in space? No. Okay, relax. Thank you, Brian and Elizabeth. You can now get ready for your dance later. Okay, so harmonious. This is just for classical ballet. For modern ballet and for contemporary dance, isn't it just like life? It is easier to break the rules than it is to follow them, right? So, when classical ballet dancers try to dance modern ballet and contemporary ballet, all they have to do is forget all the rules. That is easy to do. And so it is possible for classical ballet dancers to get involved in modern, contemporary, or even folk dancing. But for a modern or jazz or contemporary dancer to go into classical ballet, it is almost impossible. Classical ballet is still your basic foundation for all kinds of dance training. I will repeat, classical ballet is still your best foundation for all kinds of dance training. Okay, so we learn how to turn out first before we learn how to turn in. Later on, you will see a demonstration that will show classical ballet, modern ballet, Filipino ballet, and contemporary ballet, and I hope that you will be able to tell the difference between these forms. Now, enter the point shoe. When classical ballet began, it was a form of social court dance in Italy or in Europe. Court dancing, as in his history class in the Russian Ballet Academy, started with the minuet, the polka, the gallop, the polonaise. Okay, these are basic court dance steps. Okay, now. Classical ballet dancers before were all male. Yes, the male dancer was first. The ballerina came second. Why? Because 
in, in, in the European court, all the women had all of these big, long skirts and corsets that would hold their bodies together, which really limited the motion of the woman. But the man was in trousers, so he could do all the different difficult steps that ballet required. And as you know, all steps in ballet need to be done with your knees facing the side. So, even running or walking, turning, and jumping. Notice that all the movements I did with my knees turning out to the side, lose their form and lose their line once I do not turn out. Running, walking, turning, and jumping. Okay? Then, we go to the point shoe. What was the point shoe made of? What is so unique about the point shoe? The point shoe was invented by a crazy ballerina in the 17th century. We go back to first arabesque. When I do first arabesque, you see the lines that my body make in space. Now, point shoe and I go up one point. You notice that the line of my body has now become longer. And that is the aim of the point shoe. It creates the illusion of length in the body. So the longer the ballerina is, the nicer the line, the better the dance. So, as you will see later on, I believe seeing is believing. I uh, sorry, see, yeah, seeing is believing. Um, we will be presenting many forms of dance. It will be classical, contemporary, and Filipino. Bear in mind when you watch us that flash photography is not allowed. It could endanger the dancers. And also, please. Clap. We really like it when the audience responds to our dancing, especially when we are bowing and doing our curtain calls. Okay? What you will see on stage is a result of, for me, more than 30 years of everyday training, at least four to six hours a day. Okay? For the others, of course, they're younger and they have trained and performed less and uh, because we have to work every day in order to strengthen our muscles and make our muscles remember how to move